Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Tate and I'm an AP Computer Science teacher from Florida and this is part three of my five part video series intended to walk you through the AP Computer Science Principles Create task to show you how to easily submit a project that receives full credit. I recommend you start at part one of this video series, so click on the card or check out the link down in the description to go there now. In part two, using note cards, I designed a simple app that will convert from one unit of volume to another. And now it's time to actually code it. I'll be using JavaScript as my coding language and a free tool provided by code.org called AppLab. AppLab not only provides a powerful JavaScript IDE, but it makes the HTML and CSS portions of creating an app really simple. I'll start by designing my screen. In AppLab, this is done by clicking on the Design tab and then dragging and dropping different UI elements into your canvas. I already created my basic layout on note cards, so I'll do my best to recreate that in the AppLab design. Each UI element has some properties that can be set using the visual editor and other properties that need to be set manually. To make your life easier later on, I highly encourage you to use consistent and descriptive naming conventions for each of your UI elements. Once your screen or screens are finished, you can start coding by clicking on the Code tab. College Board is specifically interested in how you use the iterative development process to code your app. If you're not familiar with the term iteration, it essentially means breaking down a large program into smaller, more manageable chunks, rather than trying to do everything at once. Every program will have hundreds of different ways to iterate, and most coding problems have dozens of different possible solutions. One of the reasons it's so easy to spot plagiarized programs is that it's extremely rare for two people to independently come up with the exact same solution to a problem. The code I'm about to show you works perfectly, but it definitely is not the only way and it probably isn't even the best way to make a conversion program. For this program, the most basic task that I need to complete is to capture the user input using an onEvent function. In JavaScript, an onEvent is a built-in function that monitors a specific UI element for an action. My onEvent function will watch the calculate button for a click and it will retrieve the user number input and the user unit input values using get number and get text respectively. To check my work in this first step of my iterative process, I'll save each of the values as a variable and then I'll use console.log to check that they're working correctly. The next step in the iterative design process is to figure out how to convert from one unit to another. To start, I'll create a function with a descriptive name like convert liters to gallons, and I'll pass the user input number into this function as a parameter. So I'll put the variable value into these parentheses. This means that anytime someone calls this function, they're gonna to need to specify a number that needs to be converted. In my function, I need to do a little bit of math to convert my units. So I'll define a local variable called converted value. And then I'll set that equal to value, which is the parameter I passed into the function, multiplied by a conversion factor that I found on Google. I want to display that converted value in the appropriate text area at the bottom of the screen, so I'll use the setText function to do that. To check that this second part of my code is working, I need to call my new function in the onEvent and pass my user number input into the function as a parameter. Now, when I hit run and type in a value, you can see that a converted value is populated in the correct text area. This is the second iteration of my program, and I'll need to repeat this process for each of the possible conversions. I did this by simply copying and pasting my original function, and then changing unit names, conversion factors, and set text element IDs. The last thing that my program needs is a parent function that will contain all of the child conversion functions that I just created. Remember, the College Board rubric says that my algorithm needs to have mathematical or logical concepts and must contain two or more other algorithms, each with at least two consecutive and related instructions. I'm gonna use if statements to determine which of my conversion functions should be used, which would qualify as a logical concept. And you can clearly see that my parent function has many child functions, each with two or more instructions. So all of my algorithm boxes are checked here. To correctly process this function, I'm gonna use two different parameters. Value is an abstraction of a user entered volume that will be retrieved using get number, and unit is an abstraction of the user dropdown selection that will be retrieved using get text. Since this is my master function, I'll replace the single conversion function in my on event with this new convert all function. Then I'll hit run and begin what can sometimes be the longest part of the development process, testing. Not only should you go through your entire program and make sure that all the parts are working, but it's a good idea to have other people try it and give you their feedback. 
Just because you understand how to use your own program doesn't mean that it will be intuitive for someone else. And you'd be surprised how skilled end users are at breaking programs that you thought were bulletproof. In my testing, I was able to determine that I accidentally flipped the conversion factors for two of my units, which was causing incorrect values to be displayed. But I also discovered two other issues that I felt needed to be addressed. I'll add a few lines of code to my program to solve these two problems, and I'll make a note of it as a great topic to talk about in my reflection on the development process. We'll cover that as well as the rest of your responses and reflection in part four of this series. I'll be releasing a new part of this video series every three days, so subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when the next part is released. Feel free to ask questions down in the comment section, and I hope this video was helpful for you. Happy coding, everyone.